talk to our customers. They've been with us for quite some time. And among our customers, and you're going to hear from a few of them today, this particular one has one of the hardest networks. In general, Amazon, we run a lot of the Amazon network worldwide, very, very hard robotics networks, the whole nine yards. But even within the Amazon family, Brian Searcy probably runs the hardest network. He runs the AWS reInvent network that basically you set up 2,000 APs over a weekend and tear them up on next week and then start it all over again in the next event. It, imagine deploying a large network with very little time, bringing it back up and tearing it down and doing it all over again every couple of months. So let's hear from uh, Brian Searcy. Brian, come on up. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for being here. Beautiful Miss Customer. Yeah, take it away. Here we go. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for letting me to be here. Appreciate the interest in here. Yeah, don't, don't talk up the challenge of this one. Uh, my name is Brian Searcy. I'm a senior technical program manager at AWS with the marketing uh, event technology team. And, and yes, I'm part of the team that puts together uh, the network for reInvent and reinforce and reMars and our global summit program uh, and all of the customer facing AWS events that hopefully some of you have been to or will be coming to soon. Um, yeah, reInvent reInvent's a challenge. Uh, let me give you a little idea of what the scope is here. So 2021, coming out of the pandemic, out of a virtual event in 2020, we had the opportunity to sit down and, and kind of rethink what we wanted the experience at our premier conference to be. Uh, it's Amazon, so we always start with the customer. We always work backwards from, from what their expectation is, from what the experience that we can deliver. So we sat down and said, what's the best absolute possible technology, best network that we can provide at this event? We have all kinds of strange demos and weird use cases and IoT and robots and everybody else who wants to come to our event and showcase what they can do, the network has to deliver. Um, we always have the question, you know, what is, it, what is the worst performing device on your network? Where is the customer who's having trouble? Where is a Wi-Fi device that's struggling? How do we find not just general statistics on how great the network is, but how do we find individual devices? We get to device level, client level details on where there's trouble and how to find it. And of course, identify and fix that pain uh, as quickly as we can. So a couple stats from Reinvent 2021, not quite 30,000 attendees, four venues in Las Vegas, uh, the Venetian, the Win Encore, uh, Caesars Forum and the Festival Ground where the party takes place. We're up to six next year. We were eight venues in 2019. So this is a large uh, one single network across all the venues in Las Vegas that we use for reInvent. Um, we deployed a little over 2,000 edge devices into these properties last year. So uh, how does this happen? Well, it happens the week of Thanksgiving. The majority of it happens in about three days. Uh, operational challenge, check. High density deployment, check. Demanding use case for customers, check. Uh, so what did this look like? There we go. Uh, so I've been around this event since 2014. I've been with the Amazon team since 2018. I've been involved in, in all the re-events since then. The old process for doing this. Uh, every single switch on the network, you write a manual configuration file for it. You have to do that months in advance of the event. Uh, you have to have your requirements months in advance of the event. Uh, and event requirements never change, right? Nothing ever changes. Uh, so, of course, we have version control, we have to do change management, we have to have review meetings. This eats up hundreds of hours of engineering time. Uh, what did we do in 2021? Uh, we wrote five templates for the majority of the switches that went on the event network. Uh, took an engineer about a day to do that, another day to test it. 90% of the work to build the wires to the network already done. Uh, we, have a, we have a bunch of work streams in our, in, our, uh, in our networks that we have to have online, that they have to survive the changing environment. Maybe somebody takes a cable out, maybe they move a device, maybe they go and plug it into a different switch. Uh, my absolute favorite feature from the wired assurance portfolio is dynamic port profiling. Wherever this device shows up on our network, it switches to the right VLAN, it's connected, there's no manual change process. We don't have to keep track of them, we don't have to worry about somebody unplugging something and plug it back in. The security cameras stay online, the demo devices stay online, whatever it is, it's just taken care of. Um, I think the other big win that came out of this, uh, the zero-touch provisioning process, we talked about the legacy model. You're mainly writing a configuration file for every switch. This means you need a base configuration file on that switch before you do it. So every new switch in your inventory, you have to unpack, you have to manually configure the first time. Uh, we didn't do this in 2021, which was a good thing because of supply chains. 99% uh, of the devices that we plugged in at reInvent had never been online before we took them out of the box and put them on the event network done. 
Uh, so this was a huge, huge operational load for us, uh, load released from us for 2021. Very small team, just getting back into doing events. You know, half the people with the established knowledge in this industry went on to do something else during COVID. So this was a huge lift for us. Uh, so what about the Wi-Fi side? Uh, very similar problems, very similar manual operational process in the past, right? You have to wait till you have controllers installed on site. You have to get your HA pairs up and running. You have to fail over testing, everything else. Then you can start the work of configuring your network, putting all your groups and your RF profiles and getting everything ready to test. Uh, then maybe once you start employing, uh, deploying all your access points, you start putting them on maps. You can start building some cool graphics. You can use that for monitoring. You can maybe do some analytics. Uh, huge manual load for your engineering team on site during an event. You know, you're building this in four, five, sometimes three days, sometimes two days, depending on sites. You don't have time to do this work. Uh, and then of course, like we said, you can't just take this and lift it and shift it to the next site, to the next event. We want to bring this experience to all of our events that we do around North America and around the world starting next year. Uh, so getting rid of the controllers, huge advantage for us. Uh, we did some more other different things though for 2021. This was the first year that we were able to simulate every access point, the entire floor plan, the entire space of reInvent prior to getting on site. We then took those simulations and those deployment maps and we lifted them directly into MIST and it was done. So all of our mapping, all of our AP location done before we even got on site. Uh, using the output from all those simulations, we already know what we need to set up for all of our templates, all of our profiles, all of our RF settings, everything else. Uh, after, we, after we went through the whole simulation, it took about a day to build all of the logic and all of the underlying profiles that powered the reInvent wireless. Uh, just like with the switching side, 99% of the APs had not been on the network prior to being deployed from reInvent. Uh, and the great thing for me personally, having done this for years the old way, was sitting back the first day of the event with a full map with all my access points already on it and watching them change from green, uh, change to green from red as we brought the network up. And instead of doing manual processes to you know, check that everything's coming online and looking for errors and anything else, we were able to go right into, hey, what's the performance look like? Uh, this is game changing for us. And for anybody doing short-term deployments or quick turnarounds, uh, it was amazing. So I wanna get a little bit nerdy about some of the design statistics. We mentioned that we wanted to take the existing technology and say, what's the best possible network we could possibly provide? Uh, so what we went with, 802.11ax, we're gonna get at least NEG65 for signal strength. We're gonna try to keep every client at least at MCS6. Um, WPA3, we rolled that out pretty aggressively last year. Uh, the security of the network is an overriding priority for everybody at AWS. Uh, what this translates into is for a given two by two device on a 20 megahertz channel, we expect you're gonna be able to get a physical rate of at least 150 megabits anywhere in the event. So that's the bar. A um, Couple of other stats from last year. About 15,000 peak clients, about 32,000 total clients, over a gig of traffic, pretty good. We think we're gonna beat that this year. Some of these things are gonna double. Um, so what's the operational load for doubling the traffic and the size of your network this year? Uh, the other thing that we haven't quite touched on yet, almost all of our access points use external antennas. Uh, in a high density deployment like this, Omni is a four letter word. We've been, you know, for years deploying significant amounts of high, uh, of high gain antennas at reInvent, no different here. The big difference for me was I walked a lot less and I surveyed a lot less. Uh, in the past, we found that RRM algorithms did a really good job for Omnis and were pretty disappointing when it came to high gain antennas. Uh, I, can, I, I can gratefully point out that that was not the case this year. In fact, for the first time at reInvent, we did not do a, a manual channel plan for the keynote in the history of the event. Uh, we let the algorithm do it. It did a better job than we could have. Uh, I did a whole lot less walking in this keynote. There's about 8,500 seats, about 145 antennas in there. Uh, it gets built in about two days, and that gives us about a 24-hour window uh, to get in and test and do any kind of tweaking that we need to do. Uh, in the past, that's been a very difficult turnaround. There's always manual adjustments. There's always things that we got wrong. We didn't. It just worked out of the box this year. Uh, the other place that saved us a ton of time and a ton of effort, we talked about wanting to know exactly where problems on the network are, exactly where customer pain is. Um, we're renting somebody's house, right? We come into these venues, they have their own network deployments, we ask them to turn them off, thank you very much, we're bringing something else. We're borrowing their infrastructure, their physical cabling, their fiber, their le <laughs> legacy uh, physical plant in a lot of cases. 
So how can we proactively, while we're building the network, discover where we have cable out of spec, where we have dirty fiber, where we have uh, you know, jacks with bent pins, uh, we have labs, we have a lot of places where there's high hardwire counts, right? And somebody always very politely will take a cable off the floor and plug it into the nearest switch and create a loop. So how do we find those and go fix them before they can cause a problem? Marvis did all these things for us. The troubleshooting was significantly lower manual effort. The team this year was significantly lower in size than in years past, uh, and we were able to do all this. Same thing on the wireless side. How do we find, how do we find those very strange transient behaviors in wireless, right? We, we make a lot of assumptions on where people are gonna be in the event space, where the coverage needs to be. We never get it 100% right. There's some cool activation over in a corner we didn't plan for. Why are there 300 people clustering around this one area? Hey, oh, and then it went away. We didn't hear about it till afterwards. We couldn't fault find. Well, now we can find all the coverage anomalies, we can find roaming issues, we can find the transient things that happen when a breakout's emptying and other people are coming back in that we could never troubleshoot before. We can find them in real time and we can work on them. Uh, and despite all this, we're kind of just scratching the surface, frankly, the capabilities of this platform. We're doing a lot of testing for 2022 events around location services. We wanna introduce heat mapping and, and blue dot and wayfinding. How do we move people around campus? How do I ensure that if you have a session on the fifth floor, followed by a session on the second floor, you know how to go, there, how to get there and you know how much time it's gonna take. Uh, double this for when we start talking about moving between venues, right? The journey of that customer, the journey of that person, how do we make sure that you know where to go? Uh, we're looking at location services for line monitoring as well. What if it could tell us, hey, there's more people in line for the session that can fit in that room? Or what if it could tell us, hey, this room is overflowing, but the room next door isn't. How do we divert people and go there? There's all kinds of things we can do. Uh, meals is always a thing in anybody who's ever been to events. You don't wanna be the person standing in line when the food runs out. What if we knew there's twice as many people on this side of the hall as on the other one? Can we divert food? We can solve problems before we have them in real time, not just on the network. Uh, and my favorite is, the last one's my favorite here, 60 gigahertz. We've been waiting for a long time. Uh, did, a lot, did a lot of testing yesterday. Actually got the first hands on with six gigahertz access points with external antennas. Yes, it's possible. Uh, did some of the testing for this. We're figuring out where to roll it out for Raymond this year. Uh, you will see it at the event this year in November. We hope you come join us. Um, but this is potentially game changing. If we have 300% plus more spectrum than we ever had, we don't have interferers in there. What are devices doing with it? What are the use cases that we can solve for customers that we would never allow on a wireless network in the past? Stay tuned in this space, there's a lot more coming, but this is potentially the most exciting thing in Wi-Fi in many years. Um, and yeah, Sadir, so back to you. That's my, that's my crazy, my week every year.